Hello once again, welcome to this channel. So, let's now discuss your fourth quarter week two of your science seven. So, you have here the most essential learning competency, cite and explain ways of using Earth's resources sustainably. So, basically our topic is Earth's resources. There are two types of natural resources on Earth, so it could be renewable and non-renewable. So, natural resources are all connected in a way. We tap into their supply to survive and also to function properly. Therefore, if one is taken away, it has great effect on other resources. So, when water is eliminated from an area, the vegetation, soil, animals, and even the air in that area will be affected negatively. So, in the screen uh, is an illustration of some great things that we get from natural resources. So, all resources used by humans are not in endless supply. Lack of environmental awareness, human greed, and carelessness are threatening the natural resources to their depletion and extinction. To conserve natural resources is to protect or use them wisely without wasting them or using them up completely. Sustainability of natural resources means conserving them to make them last. Therefore, each of us should take part to make these resources available for future generations. Let us now dig deeper into each of the Earth's resources, like water, soil, energy, and other natural resources. Let's start with the water resources. So, water resources exist in many forms such as bays, rivers, streams, falls, lakes, streams, ponds, swamps, gulfs, and straits. Are you familiar with all these forms of water resources in your surrounding? How about watershed? Have you ever heard about watershed? Well, it is an area of land and a slope which drains its water into a stream and its tributaries. So when you say tributaries, they are small streams that supply water to a main stream such as river, lake, or bay. Watershed boundary is the highest point of the area. When it rains, water runs downhill forming into rivers, streams, and lakes until it reaches the ocean. However, not all rain flows out in this way. Some seeps into the ground as groundwater and some becomes runoff, carrying soil, pollutants, and other materials into the water body. Exist runoff can cause flood and river or stream erosion. So basically, the watershed serves as habitat for wildlife, covers all the lands on earth, comes in all shapes and sizes, and watershed comes or maybe a combination of forests, grasslands, marshes, ponds, and other ecosystems. In the Philippines, some watersheds cross towards towns and provinces, while in other countries of the world, they cross national boundaries. Do you know that wherever you are now, you may be standing on one watershed? In the screen, you can see the watershed in its location. Now, here's the question. Do we need these watersheds? Of course, as far as we need water in our daily living. Is fresh water a limited resource? Certainly, of all water on earth, only 3% is fresh water and 97% is salt water. Of these 3%, more than half is frozen as snow and ice, and a large amount is stored as groundwater. There is only 0.3% fresh water that supplies all the inhabitants on the earth. If our water resources will be contaminated, polluted, and decreased beyond its minimum level, water supply would be threatened. So, let us join the call to save water as much as possible. So, we have here some ways to conserve our water resources. First, plant more trees. 
Trees bring up cooling effect and exhibit transpiration, releasing excess water to the atmosphere to recycle. Second, proper waste disposal. Throwing garbage everywhere will not only pollute the water resources but also contaminate water's quality. Third, save water at home. Water flows directly into our home. The best way to conserve water starts with us. For example, fix faucets with leakage. Turn off the faucet after use. Don't play with water. And collect rain rainwater for cleaning and watering plants. Now let's proceed to soil resources. Soil is made up of water, air, and organic matter. It is the solid part of the earth. Plants rely on it for water and nutrients. Without soil, there is no food in our table. Now the question, how does soil form? Did you know that rock is the parent material of soil and it takes thousands of years of a rock to form an inch of soil? Weathering is the process of breaking down rocks into tiny particles. This process happens in two ways, physical and chemical. Physical weathering breaks down rock without changing the rock's chemical composition, while chemical weathering breaks the rock into smaller pieces and changes its chemical composition. When rock withers, the decaying organic matter such as dead plants, animals, fungi, and other organisms mix with the rock fragments, minerals, and water to form soil. This process continues to work slowly and fine particles form at the top layers of the soil. In warmer regions such as Philippines and other Asian countries, soil is more developed, matured, and good enough to sustain various farming activities. Hence, many of us Filipinos are farmers. However, some problems also arise in cultivating soil resources. Soil erosion is the most common. This natural process of losing soil nutrients is caused by some erosive agents such as water, wind, plants, and animals. On the other hand, human activities such as intensive farming and deforestation contribute the problem of soil erosion and other soil-related problems. Now, here's the questions. Here are the questions. What will happen to all living things on Earth if soil continues to lose its nutrients? Can we still get enough food supply? Probably not. Are there ways to protect our soil resources? Yes, there are. Soil conservation is one of those. So soil conservation is a way of protecting soil from erosion, another type of soil deterioration, so as to maintain its fertility and productivity. Okay, we have here ways to protect and conserve soil nutrients. So we have first crop rotation. So this is a practice of planting different crops each harvest to reduce the loss of nutrients from soil. So if this month you are planting cabbage, the next month do not plant any more cabbage. You plant another crop. No? So that's crop rotation. Then we have vermicomposting. So it's a process where earthworms feed and burrow through the soil and their casting or waste serve as fertilizer. Okay, we have that in our school. Then tree planting helps cover and hold the soil together, protecting it from erosion. Then the, the fourth way of conserving soil nutrients is planting uh indigenous crops like peanuts and cassava because this helps enhance soil fertility and reduces the need of commercial fertilizers then we have the fifth way of conserving soil nutrients is watering the soil so this nourishes the plants and moistens the soil which prevents erosion due to wind activity then we have organic composting helps the soil absorb and retain its nutrients and moisture and the seventh way of conserving soil nutrients is using organic fertilizer because this nurtures the soil with organic matter and reduces dependency on chemical products. 
Now let's proceed to energy resources. So the year-round warm temperature and availability of water depend on our geographic location. The tropical climate and geologic conditions also provide several possibilities to get clean and cheap energy. So we have the first clean and cheap energy, solar energy. So this is the energy from the sun converted into electrical energy using solar panels. So the one you see in the screen are solar panels. So this is the cleanest and most abundant renewable energy source available. Solar power plants are Petrosolar in Tarlac City, Helios in Gross Occidental, and first Toledo Solar in Cebu. Second energy resource is geothermal energy. It contained in the rocks and fluids beneath the Earth's crust and can be found as far down to the Earth's hot molten rock called magma. It is carried by water and steam to the Earth's surface to generate electricity. So we have geothermal power plants in Laguna. So we call it Macban, then Tiwi in Albay, Bakman in Sorsogon, and Palimpinon in, o in Negros Occidental. We have the third energy resource, the hydropower or hydroelectric. Conversion of energy from flowing water into electricity. So some also utilize hydrothermal energy. Large hydroelectric power plants are Ambuklao in Binguet, Magat in Isabela, and Agos in Lanao del Sur and Lanao del Norte. Then we have the coal. So it's black or brownish black, solid rock that can be burned and used as fuel to generate electric power. It's taken under the ground through mining. This, it is the source of air pollution when used as fuel and produced carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. It's the largest deposit or it has the largest deposit located in Simirara Island, Antique. So we have here a trivia. Fossil fuels were formed from plants and animals that lived millions of years ago and are buried deep in the earth. So examples are coal, petroleum, or crude oil, and natural gas. So this coal, natural gas, and petroleum or crude oil, they're all fossils, okay? But in our country, we only have coal and natural gas. We don't have this crude oil or the petroleum. All right, so we have natural gas. So this is used as fuel to produce electricity. It produces the least carbon dioxide among fossil fuels. Its deposits are found offshore in Palawan. The Malampaya gas field employs deep water technology to draw natural gas from deep beneath Philippine waters. So we're not going to take up petroleum or crude oil because it we cannot found or it is not found in the Philippines. Okay, we do not have crude oil or petroleum in the Philippines. So we just discuss the one we have in our country. Then we have another cheap energy resource, wind energy or wind power. So it Made you, it makes use of wind to generate electricity. So wind turbines convert the kinetic energy of the wind into electrical energy. So windmills are found in Quereno, Ilocosor, and Bangoy, Ilocos Norte. Then, then we have the exercises. So this is very easy. So you all you have to do is to classify the given natural resources as the renewable or non-renewable resources. For example, number one, water. So this is renewable. The products could be energy, irrigation, salt, food, because it says take the words from the word bank below. Your answer can be repeated in any of the other item number. Write your answer, okay. So itong energy, irrigation, salt, food, makikita nyo sa word box. At itong renewable or non-renewable na sa heading ng column. Okay, so you're going to choose between the two, renewable or non-renewable. For the products, you are going to select on the given in the word box.
napaka easy lang naman. So all you have to remember for renewable, it can be replaced or replenished easily. Examples are plants, animals, wind, solar, geothermal, water. Whereas on when you say non-renewable, it cannot be repla replaced or replenished easily. So example, soil, coal, petroleum, natural gas, minerals. Because it takes millions of years for it to uh, be to reproduce. So since plants are replaced by new ones after each harvest, so that makes it renewable resources. Animals also can reproduce and are replaced when young animals are born. Then wind, water, and heat from the sun and magma are always available. Whereas when you say soil, it comes from rocks and it takes thousands of years to form it. So that's non-renewable. It takes millions of years for dead plants and animals to turn into fossil fuels like coal, petroleum, and natural gas. Then as well, minerals like gold, copper, and iron are used up by people rapidly. But take note, it is non-renewable, gold, copper, and so on. So for exercise 2, all you have to do is to determine whether the given activity is beneficial or harmful to natural resources. So you just write the corresponding letter of the activities according to its appropriate column. So if it's beneficial, write it under beneficial column. Then if it's harmful, write it under, under harmful column. Then for the assessment, it's a multiple choice type of test. It's just very easy. And for your su suggested enrichment, we, you can... I mean, you can answer this easily because it is found in our discussion. Okay, so thank you so much. I hope you are, you learned something today about Earth's resources and how to conserve it.